This is Mori of Yeshorom. Unveiling Yahuwah's perfect timepiece. The 32 to 33 year restart position. Someone said that we made this up. The level of knowledge that is amongst our people is almost zero when it comes to the luminaries. But everyone's teaching it as if they understand Yah's perfect timepieces. Let's begin. Kora, it's a think tank. It's where people who have esoteric knowledge go. Well, I'm going to correct these people with their so-called esoteric knowledge because they really only have book smarts. I have the Ruah. What is the 33-year lunar solar cycle? There's no such thing as 33-year lunar solar cycle. I used to say 33 in the beginning, but after learning and my knowledge was increased, I found out how it really works. The moon will travel through all of the seasons. It will return to its original starting position with the sun in 32 years. Why do they say 33 years? Well, the sun will have an overplus of 320 days. The moon will have an underplus, well, a deficiency of 320 days. The Aliyam, the angels, the watchers, the messengers, the leaders and the heads of the thousands who are over all the creation and over all the stars. Take the 320 day overplus of the sun, add it to the 320 day underplus of the moon, and the sun and the moon will become equal. The sun will have 354 days, and the moon will have 354 days. And the sun goes forth first. It traverses across the sky for a full 12 hours. When it dips below the horizon in the western sky, Hidash, there she is. I see her. She has become visible. This event happens every single month that the sun and the moon will go into conjunction 12 months. The sun will go forth 12 hours before the lunar event shows up. If you add the 12 months with the 12 hours per month, it will equal six days. There's your overplus. Then the leaders in the heads of the thousands who are over all the creation and over all the stars also have to do with the four intercalary days. So they add the intercalary days during the course of the year and look what happens. The moon will move away from the sun in the amount of 10 days. Now they're saying it's a lunar solar cycle. We used to say that before in the beginning, but that's not true. The moon doesn't have any light. The sun has all the light. So if you want to be proper in your statement, you would say solar, lunar. Why? The sun carries all the time. It transfers the time to the moon via light. The moon is a display. You can see all of your time play out on the moon. Can you see it play out on the sun? This is the way the clock works. But the Gentiles has switched everything around. Everything they say is a lie. 
Let's continue. It takes 33 years for the cycle of the lunar years to get back to the original position, the starting position. In simple terms, the 32-year cycle, a lunar month, can also be defined as the time the moon takes to pass through each of its phases. Stop. No. It's the time that the moon uh, takes to pass through each of the seasons and returns back to the original starting position. It'll go through the phases of new moon, half moon, and full moon and return back to its original starting position. This is my expertise. I was taught by the Alayam. Okay, let's see it play out. Here's an illustration. March 18, 2018. Look on the bottom. It's Pope Gregory's calendar. Look on the top. There's Yao's calendar. Got it. The 18th is when the celestial event, sunrise, happened. When the sun and the moon were in their original restart position. Yeah. Why is it the 18th? Well, most people say that your equinox would be on the 20th. Pope Gregory fixed his equinox to the 21st. But we're not looking for an equinox. We're looking for sunrise. The actual celestial event. The observer's equinox, as they call it, is on the 18th. Did you know they wait two days when the celestial event happens to the sun dips to the celestial plane, which is the equator, and then they say it's the equinox. Does equinox mean equal day and equal night? No, it means equal light on the North Pole and the South Pole. That's why they wait for two days. Then they'll tell you in the same passage or the same uh, explanation that it's almost equal day and equal night. And even when you look up the word equinox, it's a Latin word, it's a compound word, equus, equal. Nox is night. It doesn't tell you anything about equal day or equal night. So now you understand why the celestial date would be the 18th. Sunrise. The beginning of the new year. Now look at the 17th. You see it's underlined there. The Aliyam would place their intercalary there. Day there. Which will make the 18th equal day and equal night okay so the sun goes forth first it goes across the sky for a full 12 hours when it dips below the horizon in the west look up top March 18th waxing crescent illumination 1% Hadash there she is I see her. Look at what you are actually looking at. The first new moon after sunrise. You would say in your verbiage, the first new moon after the equinox. Can you see? This is what they're trying to achieve by bringing the moon back to the net back to an equinox but this event only happens once every 32 years now let me show you how it played out the next year in 2019 the moon had moved away from the sun in the amount of 10 days how did that happen well the sun has an overplus of six days I explained to you how that works out. And Aliyam add the four intercalary days. So the moon will move away from the sun in the amount of 10 days. Look up top. 
March 7th, waxing crescent 1%. We spotted the moon that time. How does the day work with the moon? From evening to evening. So your new moon's day would be March 8th. Okay, count from March 8th is day one. Count to the 17th. Tell me how many days you have. Ten. The moon has moved away from the celestial event in the amount of ten days. Perfection. Go backwards. Start from seventeen and go back to eight. Ten days. Look what happened. At the end of our four hundred year captivity. Yah stretched forth his arm to the Kedusha Yam. No one else seen this event but me. For a while I was shaken. I said, something wrong? Why can't anyone else see this? Why can't they understand? This is why they chose me to lead the way, to teach you how to find Yah's days in this matrix that they created for us. Now, there were some people on the Path of Years page scoffing and laughing, and they were having just a good old time. There were some people who said, ah, well, you made up that 32 year meetup thing. It's not in the scripture. Hanuk, chapter 74 and 75, verse 1. Let's take a journey through space and time. Thus I saw their position. He's speaking of the 32 year restart. How the moons rose and the sun set in those days. Did the moon rise first? In order for the moon to rise, the sun had to set first. And if five years are added to the sun, it has an overplus of 30 days. Five years, six days per year equals 30 and all the days which accrue to it for one of those five years we're just going to use one of the five years for an illustration when they are full when the six day overplus and the four intercalary days are added together amounts to 364 days and the overplus of the sun and of the stars amounts to six days you see I'm not making this up. And in five years, six days, every year comes to 30 days. Watch this. And the moon falls behind the sun and the stars to the number of 30 days. They're just speaking of the overplus, the intercalary days. They didn't add it to the count for the moon yet. But look what happens. The moon falls behind. Keep that word. And the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly. Well, the moon cannot bring in the years. The moon doesn't have any light. The sun has to transfer the light to the moon so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day unto eternity. It is a stable clock but complete the years with perfect justice in 364 days okay I told you before when they started the Sun had 354 days and the moon had 354 days we're gonna do a little math subtract the four intercalary days 
from 364. What do you have? 360. Very good. Now we're going to subtract the 6 day over plus from 360. What do you have? 354. So the sun had 354 days and the moon had 354 days and the sun went forth first. It traversed across the sky for a full 12 hours. When it dipped below the horizon in the western sky, Hidash, there she is. I see her. She has become visible. Now this event where the sun and the moon go into conjunction happens every single month and the sun will go forth first for a full 12 hours. 12 months add up 12 hours per month it'll equal 6 days and the leaders and the heads of the thousands who are over all the creation and over all the stars look on the bottom 75 1 who are placed over the whole creation and over all the stars have also to do with the four intercalary days hmm so when the intercalary days are added to the six day over plus the moon will naturally fall behind the sun in the amount of 10 days that's how it happens in three years there are 1092 days we're speaking of the sun and in five years 1820 days so that in eight years there are 2912 days for the moon alone the days amount in three years to 1062 days and in five years she falls 50 days behind there's that behind word again there is five five years to be added to the 1062 days and in five years there are 1770 days when you add those two together so that the moon the days in eight years amount to 2,832 days for in eight years she falls behind to the amount of 80 days all the days she falls behind in eight years are 80 what direction does she go forwards or backwards simple question so if you say you're going to follow the first new moon after the equinox that's going forwards you're going in the wrong direction and the year is accurately completed in conformity with their world stations and the stations of the sun which rise from the portals through with which it the sun rises and sets for 30 days did it tell you to do anything everyone looks at this passage and somehow in their imagination they say they have to control it but you can't unless you can change the rotations of the sun the moon and the stars in the heavens if you can't do that it's a delusion is it possible for us to have rational thinking can we do it is it transgression of the law to think outside of the box can we deduce can we use the big brains that Yahuwah has given us? Okay, here's the question. 
How is Yahuwah's Pasa, you know, Passover, in January? This is the question they ask me. When I hear this question, I say to myself, they have no knowledge at all? Direction. 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 Behind. Asanya, the moon, she falls behind who? Ayaras, the sun. She knows her place. She does not move ahead of him. She falls behind, behind, behind. She does not go forwards. It's the way the clock works. It's the way he who is seated upon the throne made it to be displayed in the heavens. Here's the illusion that is causing all of the confusion. Pope Gregory's calendar. How many intercalary days does Pope Gregory's calendar have? Answer, seven. He has seven 31-day months. Did you know that? If you don't know that, you should not be teaching time. Okay, how many intercalary days in the book of Hanuk? Four. How many seasons? Four. So there's only four 31 day months. This is teaching that comes from the heavens, not from the Gentiles. Okay, so we're going to subtract four from seven. How many fictitious days do you have left over? Three. So we have three fictitious days. What are we going to do with these three fictitious days? Well, we're going to take two of them and add them to February. Why? Because February has 28 days and there is no 28 day month on the solar calendar, correct? That is right. So now we add the two to the 28 and it becomes 30. Now the calendar has 300 and 64 days. Got it. All right. In six years, from 2019 to 2025, it's coming up, she fell behind. Who did she fall behind? Ayara's, the sun. She does not move ahead of him. She falls behind every year 10 days will equal 60 days where would you be january what do we do with the extra six days uh-huh plus there was a leap day in between what do you do with it you throw it in the garbage it's fictitious created by the Gentiles listen to me brothers and sisters they use witchcraft on you and the father knew it so he raised up a champion to fight against the wiles of the devil they were laughing at you all these years. You were saying, look how silly they are. We got them. As long as they keep you near the equinox, you're still in transgression of the law. Even though you think that you're keeping it, you are not. Listen to what the Most High said. There's a way that seems right to men. Then 
comes to judgment. My ways are surely not your ways. So look what's going to happen this year. The lunar event, the first day of the lunar month will fall out on January 1st. Let me show you an illustration. December 31st, 2024, look up top, waxing crescent illumination, 1%, Hidash. There she is. She's so beautiful. I see her. She has become visible. She's in the western sky. How does a day work? Well, Asanya works from evening to evening. Doesn't that tell you something? You cannot have an evening to evening count on the solar calendar. If your Sabbath is on Saturday, there is no such thing as an evening to evening count. There's only sunrise to sunrise count. So if you're starting from the evening and you're going to the next evening, New Moon's Day will be January 1st. Take this video, share it with everyone. You have been activated. You are now one of the apostles. You are working for Yahusha Hamashiach. This message comes directly from him. When we count from the first day of the lunar month, we're going to count 14 days in the evening. It's going to be Yahuwah's Pasa, not man's Passover. This one is in the heavens. The only one that he will follow is the one he created. He told you to observe it, watch it, follow it throughout the years. But Satan, through an illusion, that caused all of this confusion and everyone went in a delusion thinking that they can control the moon but you can't share this with everyone repeatedly take the blood out of your hands because you did your job Shalom